Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with a really exciting video. Uh, so Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery and I have decided to run our own readathon throughout the month of June. Uh, and so that's called the Ancients Athon. And essentially, the goal of Ancients Athon is to focus on reading literature that was written prior to the year 1700. So we both feel like there's a lot of talk about modern classics, Victorian classics, uh, and even classics of the 18th century, but sometimes classics of the Renaissance, the medieval period, and the Greek and Roman ages are kind of overlooked. And we also think that that's probably because there is a level of intimidation with classics that are written prior to 1700. So the entire goal with this readathon is, of course, to read books written prior to 1700. Uh, but it's also to get a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So the readathon will be going throughout the month of June. And essentially, if you just read one work written before 1700, you are participating in the readathon. There is no need uh, to stress about anything. Uh, but we have chosen a group read and there are some prompts. The prompts are of course completely optional, but we thought that might make it a little bit more fun. So our group read for the Ancients Athon will be The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. Uh, and this is a really famous classic from the 1600s. And I believe I've read it in part, if not in whole, many, many years ago. And I really enjoyed it. And I think this is one that people often are intimidated by. They've seen reference to it in many, many other works. Uh, and they're often a little bit intimidated by the language. And so Tori and I thought that it would probably be a pretty great choice for a group group read uh, so that we could all get in on this together and hopefully discuss it. Tori and I have also created a Goodreads group where you will be able to discuss the prompts in more detail and also where we can discuss the Pilgrim's Progress throughout the month of June. Again, the group read is also totally optional, uh, but if you do choose to join in, I actually am really enjoying this edition. I got the Oxford World's Classics edition, and I will show you why I love it, uh, because there are often little notes in the margins that will be telling you what works he is referencing. In The Pilgrim's Progress, he is often referencing specific verses of the Bible. Uh, so I'm really enjoying this edition, and I think the Penguin probably does a similar thing. But uh, if you're looking for an edition to pick up, I am really enjoying the Oxford so far. But let's get into the prompts. I think we have some really good prompts here uh, that offer the opportunity to get kind of creative. And as we go through the prompts, I thought that I might recommend a couple of things. I am planning on doing uh, maybe another recommendations video uh, later on in the month, especially when I talk about what I am planning to read for my TBR. Uh, but just off the top of my head, uh, I did want to give you a couple of recommendations for each of these prompts. So our first prompt is to read a play. And this seems like the best possible prompt for a readathon about books written prior to 1700, uh, because really the novel as we know it didn't really come about until the 1700s in terms of actual structure. But often where we can get kind of a similar level of drama would be in plays. And plays are something that have been popular since the classical period. And so this prompt has a lot of different ways that you can go. You can go ancient Greece, uh, you can go ancient Rome, you can go medieval period, you can go Renaissance. And so of course, the main person that we think of when we think of plays is Shakespeare. I have recently picked up used a bunch of these Oxford Shakespeare's because they were all 50 cents at my local used bookstore. And the majority of the ones that I picked up were the comedies, which I have not read very many of. And what I have read of them, I don't know that I would say I totally enjoyed, but I'm looking to get out of my comfort zone. And if I do read a Shakespeare, I think it will be a comedy. Uh, but if you're looking for a really good Shakespeare recommendation, one that's not really something that's obvious like Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet, uh, I would actually recommend The Winter's Tale. I think that does kind of qualify as a comedy. I didn't particularly like it, but this is a play that inspires a lot of strong emotions in people. And so if you have never tried A Winter's Tale, I would really be curious to know 
what your feelings on it will be. Uh, because I do think it is one that people either love or hate. I unfortunately didn't really get on with it, but I do think it's a really interesting title from Shakespeare's lesser known works. A bit of a contemporary of Shakespeare is Christopher Marlowe. Uh, now, Christopher Marlowe's most famous play is Dr. Faustus, and that's one of my favorite classics of all time. It's certainly one of my favorite experiences of studying a work in school. I've read Dr. Faustus many, many times uh, in school, and it was a really enjoyable experience every time. And I think this is a really wonderful work that is often overlooked because Christopher Marlowe did live so close. Uh, to Shakespeare. So if you typically like the writing of Shakespeare and you like the time period of Shakespeare, but you don't want to go for the obvious, uh, I do recommend Christopher Marlowe and specifically Dr. Faustus. But in terms of classical plays, you can't get any better than the Oresteia. Uh, so the Oresteia by Aeschylus is actually the only remaining trilogy of plays we have from ancient Greece. Uh, many, many plays and ancient dramas do survive that were actually part of trilogies, but they'll be the first or the second, and we don't actually have the whole series. Uh, the Oresteia is the exception to that. It is the only fully surviving trilogy of ancient Greek plays and it is really phenomenal. It is really wonderful to see the story expand from the beginning all the way to the end. But all three plays together are still extremely short, uh, so you can definitely read these in one go as one work. Often when I think about telling people where to start with ancient classics, I do think of the Oresteia. Uh, so if this is something that has really intimidated you, kind of the ancient Greek period or just ancient classics in general, I do think a play is a really good place to start and the Oresteia specifically can be a really wonderful place to begin. Our second prompt is to read a work written by a female author. And this is the one that has actually caused me the most problems because as you might can imagine, prior to 1700, uh, life wasn't all that great for female writers. But one who I would recommend, who's probably my favorite medieval female writer, uh, would be Marie de France. And she was writing, I believe, in the 11 or 1200s. And she wrote quite a bit of Arthurian romance. Now, she is often included in a lot of anthologies. Uh, so if you uh, ever took an English course in college, you couldn't sell your textbook back. Odds are pretty good that you have Marie de France in there. Her most famous work are The Lays. So The Lays of Marie de France, which I do think you can get a standalone copy of. And her work is really, really beautiful. Another female writer of the medieval period was Anna Comnena. And so this is the Alexiad, and this is her account of the First Crusade. And it's really exciting to me that one of the main primary sources we have for the First Crusade was actually written by a woman. Uh, but Anna Comnena herself lived a very interesting life. She was the daughter of the Byzantine Emperor, and she spent the majority of her life trying to scheme her way onto the Byzantine throne and become Empress. And definitely you can see shades of that coming through into this work. But this is a really interesting one. Another female writer that I really don't think we can overlook would be Sappho. So Sappho is, sadly enough, probably really the only remaining female writer from the classical period. I can't think of any others by name, so if there were more, she's definitely the most famous of the female writers of the period, but Sappho's writing and poetry uh, actually really only survives in fragments. Very rarely are you going to get a full poem, but that makes her work very short, and it makes her a pretty great choice uh, for a readathon where you might want to read more than one thing. And Sappho is one that tends to be on a lot of people's bucket list. She's often on many, many lists of books that you should read before you die. She's a very introspective poet, and a lot of people get quite a bit out of her fragments, even if they are only a sentence or two. Our next prompt is probably the most fun one, in my opinion, which is to read something that was referenced in another work. And essentially, this could go for anything. Uh, I imagine that The Pilgrim's Progress will fill this prompt for quite a few people because it's a heavily referenced work. Uh, but if you have been joining in with me on my Dante read-along recently. Uh, you've probably seen 
a hundred references, if you've seen one, uh, to the Aeneid by Virgil. So you could definitely pick up the Aeneid. You could also pick up Ovid's The Metamorphoses, which is also heavily referenced in Dante. Uh, Dante's actually a feast for references to other works. But so essentially this could go for anything. Maybe you are a massive fan of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. There are plenty of classical references in that book as well. This is definitely the prompt where people can get the most creative. So I'm really excited to see what people come up with for this one. Our fourth prompt is to read a work of nonfiction. And so I think this is a really interesting one as well because I love, love, love classical nonfiction. And so I thought I would recommend a few of my favorites. A book that is potentially my favorite of the last five years uh, would be The Lives of the Artists by Giorgio Vasari. And this is a classic of the 1500s. This is a series of mini biographies of really famous Renaissance artists, and it was written by an artist himself. Uh, so there can be a little bit of tedium to it if you are not really in for all of the artistic detail, but I absolutely am. I love this book. I really, truly love this book. Uh, and so this is one that I highly recommend if you are searching for a classic nonfiction written before 1700. Another of my favorites is The Twelve Caesars by Suetonius. And Harkening back to what I kind of said uh, with Aeschylus and the Oresteia, when I think about telling people where to begin with classics of kind of ancient Greece and ancient Rome, I often come back to Suetonius. I really think the Twelve Caesars is a really great place to start with ancient Roman literature. So I do really highly recommend this one, especially if you want maybe some humor in it because this is definitely a very gossipy book. This is just a really fun work because you often get the sense that Suetonius wrote this for you and you alone and he's telling you secrets that are best kept between the two of you uh, which is really funny because this is definitely a work that was widely read at the time of its publication uh, but it does have a real gossipy nature to it that I think makes it a very easily digestible classic of ancient Rome. Last but not least, our fifth prompt is to read something that is myth or legend based. Uh, so you can definitely just read a series of myths if you have a collection of myths that you have been meaning to get around to for a long time. I think this is a great opportunity to read them. Uh, but I thought that I would recommend some classics that are definitely myth based. Uh, so the first of these that I would recommend is Volsunga Saga. Uh, and so I've talked about this ad nauseum on my channel before. I absolutely love this saga. It is an old Old Norse saga. Uh, and it deals pretty blatantly with aspects of Norse myth. Uh, so the Valkyries play a role in this. Odin makes an appearance in this, uh, though the story is largely about um, just regular human characters. And if you loved Lord of the Rings, you should definitely pick up Volsunga Saga because there's quite a bit of it in Lord of the Rings. I would also love to recommend one of my favorites of all time, which is Ovid's Metamorphoses. So this is an epic poem that is also an ancient Roman classic, and this is just so, so good. It's really brilliant, and it's really beautiful. Ovid is retelling the Greek myths to a Roman audience, and he does kind of go up to the time when Julius Caesar died, and when they deify Julius Caesar. So he views Caesar as a god in this poem, which is really, really interesting. This is a really, really influential work. And I think that when you read it, you start to see it in basically everything. It has really long legs. And I have been considering whether or not I want to reread this for the Ancients a Thon this year, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to read this or I want to read another Ovid, uh, but this is one of my favorite pieces of poetry of all time. But of course, since we're talking about mythology, we kind of have to talk about the original Homer. Uh, this is a really great opportunity to pick up something like the Iliad or the Odyssey. Uh, and so I would suggest if you were very unfamiliar with ancient Greek classics that you should probably read the Odyssey first because it is a really well-contained narrative. It, it seems weird to suggest it given that the Odyssey follows on from the Iliad, but the Iliad is told in a very jarring way. It kind of goes back and forth between timelines and places, which I think can be difficult for the first time reader. Uh, so if you are really interested in getting into ancient Greek classics and you've not read Homer, 
I think you should probably start with the Odyssey. The Iliad is my favorite, but the Odyssey is definitely much shorter and it's also a well-contained narrative. So those are all of our prompts and our group read, which is the Pilgrim's Progress. And again, all of that is completely optional. If you just read one thing that was written prior to 1700, you can consider the readathon a success in my opinion. We just thought the prompts would make it more fun and we're both really excited about the Pilgrim's Progress so I do hope uh, that you will join in with us. I will have Tori's announcement video linked down below and her channel uh, so that you can go follow her if you're not following her already. This was her idea and I'm really excited to see what she suggests for each of the prompts so I will have her linked down below. We are going to be doing a couple of live shows throughout the month of June. Uh, so the first of those will be here on my channel on June 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We are hoping to discuss more suggestions for the prompts there and also what we are planning on reading for the month. So we're going to talk a little bit about our TBRs at that first live show. Uh, and our second live show will be at the end of June over on Tori's channel where we will hopefully be able to discuss uh, the Pilgrim's Progress in more depth and all of our successes or failures of reading during the month. I really hope that you will join us. I think this is going to be a really fun readathon. I'm so excited to see what everyone will be reading. Uh, hopefully here in a couple of weeks, I will be putting up a video talking about the possibilities that I have for my TBR. And I might also do another video on suggestions for these prompts if that is something that y'all think that you might want. But uh, I really do hope that you plan on joining us. The readathon does go throughout the whole month of June. So if you only can join in for a little bit, that's fine too. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.